Why isn't it scary to fly on an airship? In the 21st century, flying on an airship isn't scary. In the early 20th century, the technical means for safety that we have now simply didn't exist. What do you think specifically caused the tragic fate of large airships in the 1920s and 1930s? There were three factors. First, they used highly flammable hydrogen. Strict control over leaks and preventing the formation of explosive mixtures with air was required, but now, using helium instead of hydrogen eliminates the risk of explosion. The second cause of accidents and incidents was the complexity of rigid airship designs. It was extremely difficult to analyze spatial structures using the calculation methods available at the time. Modern numerical methods make it possible to determine the loads on each element with high accuracy, which significantly increases the reliability of the design. At that time, there were no well-developed airworthiness standards. Airships were designed almost without taking accumulated experience into account. There were no clear requirements for strength, safety regulations, guidelines for mandatory structural elements, or redundancy. Modern design methods and durable materials ensure the reliability of the structure, while strict certification standards, increased armament, and system redundancy make airships safer. Another advantage of the airship is its low flight speed. This gives the crew more time to react to emergency situations, and the stability of the structure minimizes risks. Modern design standards can withstand strong air currents. Mandatory system redundancy takes breakdowns into account, and the presence of ballast allows for a safe landing in the event of engine failure, with absolutely no harm to passengers or cargo. Even in the case of a complete loss of gas, modern designs ensure the airship maintains its shape and descends at a safe speed. When operated properly, flying on an airship is not just safe, it's actually much safer than flying on an airplane. For example, flights in conditions of heavy icing or snowfall are restricted, since this can increase the weight of the structure and worsen the airship's maneuverability. Modern meteorological data make it possible to predict such phenomena, which helps plan flights with weather conditions in mind. Similar restrictions apply to airplanes as well, since they also cannot operate in all weather conditions. Now let's take a look at how turbulence affects an airship. The greatest danger comes from strong updrafts and downdrafts. Updrafts can lift the airship to an altitude where the gas expands and fills the entire envelope. Modern design standards require that airship systems withstand vertical speeds of up to 15 meters per second. A properly designed and redundantly, reliably backed up system ensures consistently safe operation even if individual components fail, effectively preventing excessive pressure inside the hull at vertical speeds up to 15 meters per second. This guarantees the strength of the envelope and the airship's ability to withstand strong air currents. An important requirement is sufficient engine power. Earlier airships were lacking in this area, meaning the power-to-area ratio was low. Modern models, equipped with more powerful propulsion systems, will not only be able to withstand air currents but also gain altitude quickly. We have reviewed the key safety aspects of next-generation airships, from modern materials and control systems to strict operational regulations. Are you still afraid of flying? Do you want to learn more about the advanced technologies behind airship safety? Are you interested in the future prospects of this mode of transportation and its contribution to the environment? Then visit the New Generation Airships Project website using the link in the description. There you'll find detailed and comprehensive information about our work, research, and innovations aimed at creating a safe and efficient future for air travel. Join us to help build a world without limits, together.